In this video, we're going to walk through Screppy and all the stuff it does in this website analysis tool. It's pretty awesome for helping you rank your website better. So if you want to get more traffic, you need a tool like Screppy. It doesn't have to be Screppy, but a tool like it to help you analyze your website for SEO factors and page speed and things like that. Going through the AppSumo listing will tell you more about what it does, but we're going to walk through the tool. There's only one plan. You can set it up for 25 websites. So with this one plan for $55, you get 25 websites you can have in here at once and 25 projects. One website is one project. So that's 25 clients or 25 of your own or some mix of those two. And it has all the tools that you see listed here. You can also stack. I don't know why it doesn't have the, the tiers like it, like it does for other deals. I guess it's something in how AppSumo works, but you can stack up the 10 codes. Each code adds more projects, more crawler credits, more teams, team members, and SERP credits. And those are things that the app uses to analyze your site and they rejuvenate monthly. So with this, with one code, you get 10,000 credits a month. And I assume every time you stack it, you get that same amount. So if you do two codes, you get 20,000 of these and 10,000 of these and three codes will be times three. You get the idea. There's also a second link in the description down below. It takes you to this page. This is an AppSumo giveaway for seven Apple Vision Pros. You can't win seven of them, but you can win one of them. All you do is enter your email address. Aside from that, it's free to enter. And if you know what these are, you're going to want to enter your email address. And if you don't know what Apple Vision Pros are, you're going to want to go to apple.com and check out the Apple Vision Pro and watch the video they have there. They are pretty awesome. And you're not going to want to miss your chance to win them for free. So click the link in the description down below. Go to this page, enter your email address. And at the end of the Black Friday sale, hopefully they draw your name and you'll be winning this headset. So when you're in Screppy, all you have to do to add your site, click up here, click on add project, give it a name like RVing with family and give it a domain, not give it a domain, give the domain of the website. This has to be a website that is accessible on the internet and has content. There are advanced settings here. The crawl frequency is how many times Screppy goes out and checks your site for new data. So every 30 days is the default. That's the one they want you to use because that uses less server resources for them. You can go up to every week and then you can go every day in three, every three days if you have the advanced. I'm not sure what the advanced is. Maybe that's like a subscription you pay extra for. But every week is fine by me. I usually even go longer than that because when I'm creating content, I just want to create the content. Analyzing the content and making sure all the pieces are there, I do that as I create it. And so a tool like this is basically just a double check to make sure everything's working as it should for, for me anyway. So having a longer check frequency is okay. I'd rather spend the time making more content than analyzing the data all day. Max page limit, 500. That's how many pages it will scan or crawl on your site. If you have less than 500, this is what you choose. If you have a thousand pages, you put a thousand in here. I'm sure there is an upper limit. I don't know what it is. Screppy user agent. This is what the Screppy bot appears as when it comes to your site. If you have something that blocks bots on your site, you might want to choose a different one of these because it's probably not going to block iPhones or Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, or you can choose a custom one if you have the advanced. Timeout is how long it's going to wait for a page to load before it scans. Those are the options there. And max depth is how many links deep the bot will go to check uh, to check pages on your website. 20 is a pretty good number. The higher you go, the longer it's going to take. Click on save, and then it's going to add this website to one of your projects. And it takes a while. The scan takes a while. Instead of waiting for it, let's just go to one that we've run in the past. I ran this earlier today, so it's up to date. And this is for WP Learning Lab. And this is the data that it currently has for WP Learning Lab. This is the overview. On the left here, we have a lot of options for stuff to discover about our websites. So here, crawl pages. Currently we've got a bunch of yellow, so there's redirects. Click on here, it shows you what the redirects are. I use redirects quite a bit for various things. And I thought it would give me a list of the redirects, but it didn't. 300 redirects, there it is, 300 of them. And I wanna click this arrow and see them. So here's the redirect. A lot of WP Security Action Plan redirects. Those are courses on the site. Those redirects are fine. That's not even stuff I care to rank for. But I, over the years, I've, I've changed the location of the courses on the site and I wanna read, I've redirected the old content to the new content. And that's what happens, you gotta keep those redirects there. Just in case, actually after a couple of years, you can remove them. But just in case search engines have the old links indexed, you don't want them to have 404s, so you can redirect them. And let's see, a bunch of link types. External, internal, anchors. Don't use anchors very much, clearly. Images and the image types we have on the site. We've got one broken link. 
that's something to look into when there's broken links. So this page right here is a picture on this post and the picture wasn't found. So that's definitely something you wanna look into. That's something Google picks up on. If you have too many broken links, they'll say this website's not being maintained. So let's reduce its ranking. Let's not show it to too many people. And this one has a really big image on it. The image is, what's that, 7.4 megabytes on the home page? No, blog page. Big images take longer to load, even with compression tools. Missing alt text, missing titles, slow images. These are all great things you want to investigate that Screppy reveals to you quite easily. Here we have a lot of important SEO metrics, technical SEO metrics. Technical meaning that is relating to the structure and the construction of the website versus things like the blog content. What you're writing in your blog post is not technical SEO, that's on-page SEO, but the structure and the back end of the website, that's the technical SEO. We have duplicate H1s, a whole lot of them. This must be related to the course pages and things. So though that's not something I wanna change. I'm not even trying to rank those individual course pages because they're, they're part of the course. I'm not trying to rank that stuff, right? I'm gonna to try to rank the sales page of the course, but not the actual course itself. There's a lot of things to go through. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And what I like to see is orphaned pages. So here we have page has no outgoing links. Page has links to a broken page. But what I would like to see in here is pages that don't have any incoming links from the website. That's an orphan page. Because how are people gonna to get to it? The only way to get to it is through search engines. Whereas you could be promoting it through other content on your website via internal linking. But I don't see that here. I use SEO Power Suite as well for a bunch of tools and they have um, one called Website Auditor. And that one will show you orphan pages, which is super handy. Let's go to the crawler. Look at all these options in here. Diagnostics, syntax issues, broken pages, la di da di da no data found. I guess there's a lot of options, but there's no data found, then I guess there's not too much to look at. Canonical. These are date pages from a long time ago. These are ones you could redirect or delete. I have no doubt they show nothing in them. And so with a tool like this, the idea is it analyzes all your content, you look at it, and you determine what you can fix, and then you go and fix it. Like all these pages here, I'm pretty sure are they are um, day archives. So what I published on this day, two posts, do I really need that? No, I could go in and delete that, but then I wanna redirect it as well. Because this page, it has content, it could be indexed by Google. It's probably not, but it could be by Google or Bing or some other search engine. And so you wanna make sure that you redirect those pages so you don't lose any traffic. But that's definitely an archive page that I could get rid of. And it's something you do, um, you do it in WordPress because WordPress is generating these archive pages. So you wanna change the coding somewhere to get rid of those and then redirect them all. Let's see the content. Got a bunch of keywords here. I did not enter these keywords, it pulled them out and there's a lot of weird ones. Looks like it only read the privacy policy page. And I don't know why Alberta, Canada would be in there. I'm in Canada, but I'm not in Alberta. Use 200 times. Well, there you have it. All the keywords, all the keywords being, in this case, words that are used a certain number of times or more. And I, I assume that aren't the and 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 ah and if. Pages missing, with missing titles and click too quickly. Let's try that again. Missing title pages, none. 14 have duplicate titles. Those are probably the course pages. 33 have long titles, short titles, and good titles. So you can go in and edit those as separate pages for each of those short titles. These are those archives again. So you deal with those archives, you're getting two birds with one stone in this case. Long titles, those are probably actual blog posts. They can get pretty long. Then we have missing descriptions, short descriptions, long descriptions. Here's the archive pages again, don't have a description. Get rid of those and we alleviate a lot of these problems on the site. Missing H1s, H1s being the, the primary heading for a page, which is usually the title of a page. And those are good for SEO but I don't really care about them being on the about page, the courses page, maybe I care there, but the contact page, those things aren't uh, super important for me right now. Low content ratio. This is a page that has not much content on it. Again, we have a lot of those archives and your website's gonna pull up something different. You might not have any of these issues or you might have more or other ones, but you don't know unless you use a tool like this to scan your site. SERPs, let's go to rank tracker. You probably have to add in your keywords. If we add a keyword here, 
for example, WP Learning Lab, as many as you want. That's United States for North American, Google on desktop and mobile, save. Now we've added a keyword, it's gonna go out and check the ranking on that. We'll, we'll circle back to this later on. Google Page Speed Insights, no data found. Let's do the home page and this one here, sure. Analyze. We'll circle back to this as well. Links, all links. Broken links are definitely important to clean up. External links are links that point out of your website. Assuming that you're building your blog post properly, I mean, you shouldn't really care about those very much. No refer and no opener links. Not sure what those would be doing on the website. I can't even look at them. Oh, so this is showing us what's going on here. I'm clicking these and they're changing color to make it seem like it's doing something, but it's not doing anything. Anyhow, I like to click on the broken links and see them all, but I gotta click on the menu on the side here. So this shows all the broken links. You definitely wanna go in and clean those up. And these are external, a lot of them. Well, there's two internal ones, three internal ones here. But this is uh, Tumblr, Pixabay. I don't know why Pixabay trope is forbidden. SiteGround, various SiteGround posts. So you wanna go and update these because these SiteGround posts, SiteGround is still a operating host. So they must've just changed the location of these posts. So you gotta find them again and replace them. But if you had say 100 blog posts that reference other articles around the web, how are you gonna manually find out when those other places change their their URL structure or change the location of a certain post. It's gonna be really hard to do it manually. Tools like Screppy make it way easier. Internal links and external links, those are just links inside your site and links that link out of your site, so I'm not too worried about those. Do follows, that's a lot of do follow links. That's a lot of links leading out. Oh, that includes all the links. So these are internal links on the site, but they're also do follow. So like all the links in your menu systems on every page that loads, the reason there's so many is that every page that loads has your privacy policy, your terms of service, your what have you. And at the bottom usually, and at the top it's got the about and the contact and the services. On every page that loads, it has all those links. And so that's showing up as 6,608, which seems like a lot. It seems like something weird's going on, but it's just that they just happen over and over again on the site. No referrer links. Yeah, I think that's fine. Target blank. Usually when I link out of, a, of our website to go to a different one, I target blank, which means it opens the new website in the new window and everything here looks okay. Images, I wanna close this. I'd like to be able to close on this tab to, to open the other one. It doesn't work. See the images tab appearing down below, which must be a bug of some kind. So here we have some images. 721 of them missing alt text. That's not good for accessibility. 810 are missing a title. This would be stuff that you add inside your media library when you upload an image. We saw the broken in the big image earlier. Got 201 slow images, which are images that could be optimized to load faster or they're just too big. Like this one's only 879 bytes. It takes a long time to load. I don't think that's the image's fault. The image is quite small already. It's just for whatever reason at that moment, it was slow loading. Uptime, I think is, oh, it's on. Okay, I thought that was uh, an option you have to, yeah, here it shows disabled. That's what I'm saying. So it's disabled. You gotta come in here and enable it. Enable uptime, enable notifications. Okay, so uptime is, is disabled by default. It shows data in this current project here because I scanned it just today. And so it's showing information from today. Average response time, 0.8 seconds. It's pretty good. And so now it's active because we turned it on inside the settings. So normally this is off by default. You gotta turn it on manually in the settings. Speaking of settings, here are the settings. General, project name, team, delete project, if you're reaching your project limit, you can delete them. Or if you have a client that moves on, you move on to their own platform or whatever, you can delete them. Auto SERP tracking, automatically tracks the Google ranking of your keywords. So this will eat through your keyword credits, but if you have a lot of them, a lot of credits, I mean, and few keywords, you could enable this. Or you just come in and do it manually whenever you want to update your, your um, ranking. Speaking of which, let's see if we have any rankings. So we have WP Learning Lab, two in total because we chose desktop and mobile. And luckily we're number one, as we should be for the brand name search. Let's see what kind of data it gives us when we click on it. Now I'll take this to the website. I want data in here, in Screppy, there we go. So here it shows that we own the top 10. What is this? Search for WP Learning Lab, and these are all the results. Well, that's nice. It's not just that we're ranked number one for that, we kind of own the whole thing according to these results. That's pretty cool. Uh, so here we have information on each of these. No H1 for the homepage, no description. Title is 35 characters, too short. So it gives you tips on how to improve. So it's not just that it's ranking your keywords, it's, it's ranking them 
and it's ranking your website or it's finding your website in the top 10, but it also gives you tips on how you can improve that page, which is pretty cool. Good content ratio is 20 to 70% content to HTML. And then if you have a lot of keywords that you're rank tracking, this will show you results of all of your all your pages that are in the top 10, top 50, top 100, rising and falling, and favorites, which you manually favorite. As in keywords that you maybe really desperately want to rank for, you'd have as favorited. And Google page speed, let's go to general, see if this scan is complete. Six minutes ago, monitoring, performance of 12. I assume it's out of 100, so that's not great. Accessibility is 72, best practices 85, SEO 86. And we have auto scan available for advanced. So you could have them just like the rank tracking that you could have do on a continual basis and it eats through your credits. You can have auto scanning for your site speed, which I assume also eats through your credits. And this is not my usual performance level. So there's clearly something going on that I have, haven't kept up to date on. So got to go in and check out why it's only 12. Remove unused JavaScript. Avoid enormous network payloads, seven megabytes. So this is stuff that you uh, need to go in and fix every once in a while. And I haven't really worked on this site that much of late. Core Web Vitals, which is basically what we just looked at. I'll show them right here. In, I don't know, who's gonna interpret this? Like pros will know what's, what's going on here, but you're probably gonna wanna go to the report. And it should be the same report that we just saw. So I would like like the 12, 72, 85, 86. I'd like that kind of result for the core web vitals here. This must be in milliseconds. First contentful paint, largest contentful paint, cumulative layout shift, time to first byte. So this must be in milliseconds, I think, except for this, this isn't the time. This is an actual, like a distance measurement, I guess, the cumulative layout shift. But it'd be nice to see what kind of units they are and what's going on there. What's this crawler tab? We saw this already. So that's pretty much the whole nine yards, the whole Screppy app. And it gives you a lot of useful information. It's not the only one that does this for you, but Screppy is definitely a very useful one. It's definitely very affordable at 55 bucks for 25 websites. If you want to check out Screppy, use the link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. If you buy through that link, AppSumo will give me a commission for that, but that helps me keep making these videos for free. So it's super helpful and it doesn't make it more expensive for you if you go through that link either. Like I said that, I think I didn't. Anyway, go through the link and I'm very thankful if you do. And if you haven't done so yet, check out this playlist over here, which is all about lifetime deals, ones you wanna check out to help improve your site and improve your business. So make sure you check out that playlist. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from Limitless LTDs. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.